Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, hi, I'm Lexi, and today we are continuing with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood in dub, not sub, we're continuing with dub, episode seven, Hidden Truths, and episode eight, The Fifth Laboratory. My lisp, The Fifth Laboratory. <laughs> Last episode was kind of fun. It was very optimistic. So first of all, Alphonse and Ed headed back, Al and Ed, I'll just say Al and Ed. Um, I think that's what they call each other anyway. So Al and Ed are heading back home with like the guy that has like the little, like one tuft of hair over his forehead. And they're back on the train. They're heading back home to like fix. So Al and Ed can get fixed up by Granny and Winfrey is there too. However, they stop at this village and meet up with like an ex, I guess like military police alchemist, something like that, some form of title. And he was doing research on the um, the Sorcerer's Stone. And apparently those little marbles that we keep seeing throughout the series so far, and the one that he had in his pocket, which was like liquid, you can like change that. They're like incomplete stones. So you can change that into a Sorcerer's Stone if you figure out the right concoction, something like that, which is new information for Ed and Al to be able to get their bodies back to normal. So they're pretty stoked about that. Oh, and that guy was stopped by, was it three of the deadly sins? There was Envy, um, Lust, and Gluttony, but I don't know if Envy was there, but at least, at least Lust was there talking to him after they left. Um, but anyways, so they head back out, they head home, and we learn that Al and Ed burned their whole house down as like a fresh start. They have, they can't quit, there's nowhere to go back to. Um, so they stay at Granny's place, and I thought that was their actual grandma, but she's just an old lady that looked after them and we're friends with their family basically. So Winfrey and them are not cousins and there's like a lot of like romantic tension there between her and Ed. So maybe they can couple up here pretty soon. That'd be pretty cute. But Winfrey looks like a woman now. She's, <laughs> she definitely hit puberty. She, her outfit is different and she's kind of ascended the same or fell into the same role as Granny and kind of as like a mechanic, I guess, and fixes up Ed and Alphonse's mechanical parts. <laughs> and so they're like brand new after three days and they're heading off for the next adventure. And that's kind of where we're left off. But we also learn a little bit more information about Scar too, who's like a, I don't know if it was th this last episode or the episode before, but we learn he is an Ishbalan and they have some pretty nasty history with the alchemists. So that's why he's kind of only targeting the alchemists. Uh, which is not very fun. No, no, no. Okay, so that's kind of it for last episode's recap. I'm ready to jump into episode seven, but before we do, make sure to give this video a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on videos like this one. If you wanna watch this video full length uncut, as well as early access to more Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood reactions before I can edit them and drop them onto YouTube, my Patreon link is in the description below. It's gonna be on tiers gold and platinum, so definitely check it out. And without further ado, let's get into episode seven, Hidden Truths. Just fallen. I still get to eat him right. Gross. Yes, down to the last strand of hair. Gross. There he is. Ew. Dang. He's stronger than a sin. What? Is, what can Lust do? What does she do? I've got a ladder to climb, and this is how it's done. <laughs> I every you may not want to display your ambitions quite so nakedly, sir. I'll be sure to remember. Who's running? Reporting in, oh. sir. We've just received word of an explosion occurring on the Marl River. What? Dang. <laughs> That's a lot of destruction, yes. dude. Have you found the body? Not yet, but we're still searching. Either way, he can't be in good shape after losing this much blood. I want his body found. Don't take so much as a coffee break until that's done. Do you understand? At this rate, you're gonna work us all to death. Oh, they're literally with the pedestrians up there. Which means, oh, did they really just kill Scar? Ain't no way. Looks like you got away. Oh, he did get away. I suppose I'll be heading back to Central again. I need to report to Father about everything that's happened here. Father. I can't tell if they're talking about a priest or like her actual like creator who made her. And is it Satan? 
Are we gonna see Satan? Because that's crazy. You'll be taking over supervision of Edward Elric and his brother effective immediately. <laughs> Very well is yours. What is this? Just when I think I'm all <laughs> free, they saddle me with more bodyguards? This is getting old! <laughs> Why is he have bodyguards? Why are you wearing a suit of armor? <laughs> It's a hobby. <laughs> a hobby? What kind of freaky <laughs> is that, Lieutenant? <laughs> Miss Jessica. Are you here? Miss Jessica? Jessica. Is there? She sounds friendly ish. Oh, what? <laughs> um, there's somebody under there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are you Jessica? Yes. And you worked at the library. <laughs> Oh, the library! The word itself is so beautiful! I've loved books my whole entire life, ever since I first learned to read- Nerd! Just kidding. <laughs> you me! If I don't find another job, I'll never be able to move my poor elderly mother into a better hospital! Oh, man! <laughs> Excuse me, there was one thing we wanted to ask you. Yes? Do you remember seeing any research- <laughs> She's erratic! Marco? <laughs> there were some handwritten notes stuffed into a bookcase where they didn't belong. The notes really were there after all. Which means they burned up along But she if she reads everything, she probably remembers it. They're nothing but ashes. Sorry to bother you. I remember everything that was in them. Would that help at all? <laughs> yeah, that would be extremely helpful. <laughs> it's just how I am. I'm able to remember the content of any book I've ever read. And That's not normal. That is not normal. There's something wrong with her. <laughs> Bookworm. Sorry, I know five days is a long time to wait, but there was quite a lot to write down. Five days. Written by Tim Marco. One thousand easy recipes. <gasps> Six cups of rice, one carrot. All I did was copy down what I remember. Wonderful. So this oh is just no. Jessica, are you absolutely sure this is a flawless reproduction of the notes? Maybe it has a hidden message in it. That makes sense. Then thank you very much. You're incredible. This is my registration number and the pocket watch for ID. Withdraw that amount from my annual research grants and make sure Sheska gets it, okay? From his research grants, huh? Ah! Did he miss a decimal point somewhere? Wow, how does a boy like that have this kind of money to throw around? <laughs> his little smirk walking away. Alchemic research is always encrypted. These are designed to look like recipes yeah, to the encrypted. If they're so heavily encrypted, then how are you going to be able to decipher them? It's not going to be easy. There's a section in here on green tea. Green tea? Are you thinking that I am? Uh-huh. It might be a reference to the green lion of metallurgic alchemy. Ooh. And maybe here, too. Great. We've got a place to He's start. like, Let's this is this. out of my paycheck. <laughs> my pay grade. <laughs> Why does this encryption have to be so damn hard to figure out? They were very optimistic in the beginning there, huh? Dr. Marco about this directly. No way. That'd be admitting defeat. <laughs> Is he even alive? Like Excuse me. Jessica. I was able to move my mother to a better hospital. I really appreciate it. Had any luck deciphering it so far? <laughs> Have you found another job yet? <laughs> It was nice to know that even a pathetic mess like me can help out sometimes. So thanks for that. Jeez. Your memory is incredible. You should have more faith in yourself. Thank you, Al. She was just fishing for compliments. <laughs> Yo! Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Hughes. Major Armstrong told me you two were here. Me too. They talk to Colonel Hughes like he's an old friend. Just how high up are these boys? <laughs> We always see Ed and Al super goofy and stuff, but they are pretty like high up in the ranks, but we don't really ever get to see that because we're always focused on like them and their story. So seeing like two new people, you know, helping them and kind of like assistance, we can actually see like how important Ed and Al are already when it comes to state alchemy. It's kind of cool. All our case records were stored in the stacks at that location and trying to work without them hasn't been a picnic, let me tell you. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, Lieutenant Colonel, I think I've got exactly the person you guys are looking for. Well, I have read the military's criminal case records, and I do remember them all. <laughs> you here, lady. You're hired. My <laughs> pay as well, so don't worry. Oh, uh, you're saying you want me? Oh, thanks so much. She's got a job. Thank you, thank you. Come on now, right 
to work. <laughs> she may not be thanking us for long. <laughs> Well, there you go. One problem solved, but, uh... They've been at it for ten days now. I'm impressed they're still going after all this time. To hell with it! Uh-oh. Don't get angry because you can't crack it. Throwing things won't help. We did crack it. Huh? <gasps> we cracked the code and decrypted the notes. Really? You did? But that's a good thing, isn't it? There's What's wrong? Gonna... This is the devil's research. It should have been destroyed. The main ingredient for a philosopher's stone is human life it is the devil's research so that must be who uh lust was talking about when she keeps saying father the main ingredient is human life that honestly does not surprise me right i mean i feel like we've ar we already kind of know that because in order to make like a clean transaction an alchemy you trade something and you get something back so makes sense to manufacture even a single stone you have to make multiple human sacrifices multiple though that's different authorized... don't speak to anyone about this but sir please just pretend you never heard any of it and ed doesn't want to like ever kill anyone ever right it disturbs me too just thinking about it i bet i'd act the same way what was that <gasps> oh it was, it was nothing, nothing sir <laughs> armstrong <laughs> <laughs> uh, the voice actor cracks me up. I'm starting to think this is God's special way of torturing people who've committed taboos. Thought Ed didn't believe in God. Tell you for a while, but I guess I've been too afraid to say it. What? I. I love you. <laughs> Just kidding. I know what it said, Edward Elric. <laughs> such a terrible secret we're, we're really sorry it's hard to stay quiet when someone like him asks you imagine the military <laughs> being behind his face like do you remember what dr marco said at the station huh? what closely maybe you'll find the truth hidden within the truth <laughs> I didn't have a clue what he was talking but what about the truth hidden in the truth that's in the truth what you can see on the surface is only a portion of the truth there's still more to find here human yes. life Maybe it doesn't mean literally. Operational alchemy laboratories in Central that have connections to the government. We can narrow it down even further. Marco worked in the third laboratory. We should start with that one. It's the most suspect. <laughs> he sounds so official all the time. It was designed for the fifth laboratory, but it isn't currently in use. It's there. Huh? It was the main ingredient for a philosopher's stone. You said it needed live humans. Ugh. They're using the prisoners to make the stone. Prisons from other jurisdictions could be used too. I wonder if the government is involved. Whoa. I'll look into what we've talked about tonight. You Elric brothers, behave yourselves. <laughs> I know you two boys. You were thinking about sneaking into this building and taking a look around, weren't you? And murder! <laughs> we weren't, we weren't, we promise! And... <laughs> they do it anyways. <laughs> They're not taking any chances, are they? There you go. But Alphonse can't fit in there. Wait here. You're fine on your own? Fine on my own or not isn't the issue. You're too big to get through here. It's not like I asked to get this big. <laughs> 66. What is it, 48? It looks as if we've got guests. <laughs> Some daredevil idiots came to visit, did they? Damn, lucky I've got a small body. Oh no! I just got myself a tiny little bitchquake! <laughs> the main mission here is for Ed to uh, hit a growth spurt by the time this series is over. What a cliffhanger. <laughs> okay, you guys, that was episode seven, right? Yeah, seven hidden truths. A lot of info that's like super important went down. First of all, the Sheska, the librarian, helped them out to like annotate basically all of Marco's notes for them. Uh, they were able to decipher the like encrypted notes and realize that the main ingredient for it is human life and that this is the devil's work. Marco said something really important like the truth. The truth doesn't always mean the truth. And 
when it says human life needs to be exchanged, maybe it's more metaphoric than that. Because later in the episode, when we figure out that prisoners that are sent to exe- or that are sentenced to execution, they use those to make the stones, but those stones still are incomplete, right? They're not making philo- they're making like incomplete philosopher's stones, like the ones we've seen. Having it be the main ingredient is human life, it might be more metaphoric than that, or it could just mean something else entirely. Uh, we'll have to see. Obviously, Al and Ed will flat out refuse to get it in that way, like using someone else's life to do that, unless they find it morally sound to sacrifice someone that is like pure evil. Because what if he used this, the, this, the personification of sins that we keep seeing? They're not human, but they, they look human. They look like they can be hurt or harmed like we saw in the beginning of the episode. So maybe humanoid creatures <laughs> could be used to exchange, but I feel like that would still be a cop out and the stone would turn out incomplete. I'm just gonna go, I'm just going wild with the theories here because I don't really know what the truth hidden within the truth would entail. If the show is just complete like embedded with so much philosophical themes about human life and human existence and pulling from s- different I guess religions and arguments for human life, its existence, its purpose, and of course alchemy being able to can to manipulate manipulate that. I w- I wouldn't put it past the anime or the show to kind of go down the route of it being more of a philosophical meaning when it comes to human life that can be exchanged to complete an actual philosopher's stone. So I'm pretty intrigued about this. But yeah, like in the second um, episode there, uh, second half of this episode, Ed is like inside a prison and there's these villains with numbers names. Are they like experiments? Like why why are, do they call each other numbers? I wonder if we're gonna get some backstory on them. So I'm excited to jump into episode eight to find out what happens. It's titled The Fifth. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Oh, sorry, it's not called The Fifth. It's called The Fifth Laboratory. Oh, okay, so maybe I'm right about this where the villains are experiments on the lab and that's why they're numbered First and not named. The Again, there's no subtitles for this one. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if this is like a glitch or something in Crunchyroll, but yeah. Is that number 48 or 66? Who are you? I'm 66. 66. That's the name they gave me when I came to work here anyway. All you have to do is They're looking matching. They got the same color uh palette going on. <laughs> I bet this is what they used to transmute a philosopher's stone. Yes. Really? For the moment, let's just say my name is number 48. Hmm. My orders are to dispose of anyone who wanders in here, poking his nose where it doesn't belong. Try not to take it personally. You're an alchemist, are you? All right, then. Let's see what- Whoa, I just missed that. I blinked. <laughs> All right, then. Let's see what you've got. He's fast. My sword can pierce steel as well as flesh. He look- Number 48 looks like he's trying really hard to be a samurai, but it's just not cutting it. <laughs> my, my, what's this? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say you're hollow inside. You're a perceptive one. I could tell from the sound oh. of someone like you all the time. So there are people like me on the outside too, are there? That's surprising. <laughs> wow, just like Al. 48 is the number I was assigned when I was on death row. Back when I still had a living body, I oh. was a slicer. I was a mass murderer, you see. Are they using condemned prisoners like you to make philosopher's stones here? Well, I can't tell you. It isn't my area. They simply <laughs> recognized my skills, gave me this body, and made me the trusty guard dog. Interesting. Hmm. I'm sure th- I have a blood seal. This is it right here. Wow. It's just like Alphonse. Now, let's fight. Did you hear what I said? My dear little Alicia is about to turn three. She's the cutest little thing. <laughs> and on a military line too. Not just my daughter. Hey, a dad gushing over his kids? There's nothing wrong with that. I gush over my wife too. <laughs> and over his wife. That's awesome. I know, it's your turn now. 
Is Major Armstrong still in charge of the boys' protective detail? He was, but a couple of his men have taken over now. Mm. We've been played! <laughs> Major Armstrong's gonna take his shirt off again and yell at us some more, isn't he? <laughs> take his shirt off again. <laughs> Dang! What happened? I increased the percentage of chrome, so it's less prone to rusting, but it's not as strong. So don't try anything crazy. I have to find oh. quickly. Uh oh. I'm dead. Sorry, Ed. Your girl just effed you over. Jeez, he is dodging and evading like crazy. What a cute little monkey. Will you call it Leto? <laughs> <laughs> it's been too long. Did I already make the joke that Ed has like little man syndrome? <laughs> right about now, my companion should be finishing off the part that you left outside. Is this companion of yours strong? Yes, he is. The squid. He. You see, we've been sparring partners a long time, and I've still never beat him. Really? with a man by the name of Barry. Barry? Once upon a time, Oh, right hey, Barry the Butcher. There was a butcher named Barry who loved his work. So he took to the streets and began cutting up people instead, night after night. Okay, Barry. In time, of course, Barry was caught and the world was happily rid of yet another evil man. At least, but then that's what everyone out there believes. He's very much alive and charged with guarding a certain place, only without his body. Yes, that's right. He's standing in front of your very eyes. I am the infamous. Great story. Barry the Chopper. Ah! Sorry, I've never heard of you. Barry the Chopper, missed opportunity. Barry the Butcher. Shouldn't you be going? Ah! Or what happened to your body? Or something? Ah! What happened to your body, freak? <laughs> My brother transmuted my soul and bonded it to this armor. <laughs> are you sure you and your brother are really related? Were you ever even a real person to begin with? How can you ask something like that? I was a real boy and my name was Alphonse Elric. <laughs> How can you be so sure of that? And who's to say those memories aren't made up? <gasps> but when we what? Silly boy. You were never <laughs> alive to begin with. It's a Ain't no way Al is like falling for this this quick <gasps> there did you see that there's nothing i love more than chopping up live people oh he I threw it i thought he just used like telekinesis Go out. Do it now. What? Ooh. there's no such thing as dirty in a fight okay good to know the philosopher's stone yes Tell me everything you know about it. Sorry, can't. Hey now, tell me I didn't beat you at your own game. That's where you're wrong. I'm not beaten yet. You should have known that. I forgot to mention something about this masked murderer Slicer. His crimes were really done by a pair of brothers. An independent head and body? That's a dirty trick! Now, now, weren't you- Whoa! There's two in there. Round two's about to begin, short stuff. Just Sounds like it, it so the clown. Damn, I've lost too much blood. I'm starting to feel dizzy. Here he comes. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <gasps> Whoa! What was that? Wow. <laughs> as much as I hate to admit it, we've lost. No, I'm not a murderer. With bodies like these, are we really even people? Hmm. I consider you people whether you have physical bodies or not. 
If I didn't, that would mean I didn't believe my own brother as a person either. Makes sense. Come on, what's the matter, little puppet? There is one way you can prove that you're not just a puppet made from scraps of armor. Huh? You've got a blood seal too, right? Destroy it. Go ahead, break it yourself. If you die, you were a real boy all along, just like you want to be. Don't, Al. No, there's no way I could ever do that. I will not take the life of another person. Interesting. <laughs> I've been cheating and killing together for as long as we can remember. And now that we're in these pseudo bodies, we'll be treated like humans for the first time. Don't you see the irony? For that hmm. boy, I'll give you a parting gift. I'll tell you everything. I'll tell you who made the Philosopher's Stone and ordered us to guard this. Oh no, oh no, that looks like lust. Oh yeah, she uses her hair. Forgot about that. <gasps> My, that was a close call. Number 48. Oh no, her fingers. Talk about things that don't concern you. Well, well, would you look at that? What's the full metal pipsqueak doing here? How did you find out about this place? <laughs> Envy doesn't really act like Envy right now. Brother! Brother! <gasps> Quit your pathetic blubbering, you idiot! You were trying <laughs> to kill one of our- What would we have done then? Huh? <laughs> that seems more like wrath. I kind of like the uh, idea of Envy being able to shapeshift because a lot of the times when it, when Envy is considered a sin, a sin or jealousy is considered a sin, it's usually because you're not comfortable with who you are inside. So you loathe other people or wish to be someone else like on the other side, like just wish to be a different person or wish to be the person that you envy in a way and so you're not comfortable with, with yourself so it's just kind of interesting to see like the personification of envy being able to change into whoever they want to be that's pretty smart oh my the pipsqueak's raring to go i think i made it angry <laughs> don't call me pipsqueak again then what would you prefer a pipsqueak whoa now this is a fight that you started so come on oh Technical difficulties. <laughs> Lucky me! You're fortunate your arm's broken. If not for that, you wouldn't be getting off so easily. Don't ever forget this. Always remember we allowed you to live. We can't have him poking around this place again. It's too dangerous. It'll have to go. Blow it up. Hmm. Something I've been wanting to tell you for a while. But I guess I've been too afraid to say it. Are you sure you're not a puppet created by your so-called brother? Were you ever even a real person to begin with? What's There's the no way. There's no way. <laughs> you're mine now, little puppet. <laughs> what? Stay right there. Nice. Or the next one puts a hole in your head. This isn't going quite as I planned. <laughs> Sergeant, get down now. Jeez. Get away from there. But my brother is still inside the building. It's in there. Time to get out of here. Hey, you get going if I were you. That guy's a character. There you are. I brought a little present for you. Brother. His life's not in danger, but he has lost a lot of blood, so you might want to get him to a hospital as soon as you can. He's a precious resource. He's gone. No. Oh. All of you quiet. Calm down now. I know it well. That's the sound of a building exploding. Who's in there? You keep it down in there, Kimberly. Oh, do excuse me. What's him? Just recalling the Ashfallen War of Extermination. And it put me in such a good mood. Ashfallen War Extermination. And it put him in a good mood. I wonder if he led the thing. Are you sure you're not a puppet created by your so-called brother? There's no way. Nah. I don't believe it. There's an in-credit scene on this one. Rumor has it a promotion to Central for one Colonel Mustang isn't far off. You can't move up the ladder as young as you are without making enemies. Hmm. I've been prepared for that from the start. 
just a word of warning from someone who knows the game, which means... Get yourself a wife. No, seriously! <laughs> Get yourself a wife. <laughs> Okay guys, so that was episode 8, The Fifth Laboratory. That one went by pretty quick. It all took place in the same setting, which we haven't seen in a couple episodes. Okay, so first of all, it seems like the seven deadly sins, or I guess the three deadly, deadly sins in this case, want Edward for something. I can't remember, did they say they want him as a sacrifice? I know they said they want him as a resource, so I wonder if they're planning to create maybe a Philosopher's Stone with him, that's my theory. That would make sense. But also crazy news is that there's more of people, more, I guess, entities like Alphonse out there where they use like the blood seal to put souls into like armor. Alphonse has never lost a sparring match with Edward. So he's like better at com like combat fighting which is pretty crazy, or just fighting in general, just sparring in general. The, just like a cool piece of information and the fact that Edward is like chill with that and he actually is super proud of his brother for, for that is pretty cool. They're only like one year apart, I think. So it's not that big of a deal, I don't think, but it's a big deal for me because I just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> number 66, number 66 experimentation, I guess. He kept getting into Alphonse's head on whether he was like a real person or just a puppet be that was made by Edward and the whole story with their mom and everything is just either only like Edward's past or like a complete lie, but I I'm pretty sure like there's no way that's the case. Otherwise, Edward wouldn't be going to so much great lengths to get his body back for him. This whole narrative is about helping Alphonse get his body back. So in like the dedication and determination to do that, yes, he has needs a couple limbs too, but that's what this entire anime is about, <laughs> brotherhood. So it's not true, there's just no way. Also in the beginning of this, or was it the beginning of this one? Um, that Scar dueled with lust and envy and just barely scraped by, barely escaped, and gluttony barely escaped. So he is still running loose. He's just, he's just, he's hard to catch on both ends. Um, so we'll have to see there. But uh, there was something that Edward needed to tell Alphonse. It's probably something really dumb, honestly. <laughs> like some, I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be something that's kind of like comedic relief, but maybe it is really important, I don't know. But yeah, solid two episodes. I feel like we've gotten a lot of information on both getting a step closer to creating a philosopher's stone and then also the looming antagonist presence of the sins and like we're, we've gotten a step closer to their ultimate plan. So we're getting there. The, the story is definitely pushing along and it's answering questions piece by piece. So, and I, I like the kind of like duality of the seriousness on human life, alchemy, religion, philosophy, but then also so much comedic relief with the characters and the timing of it. It's really, really fun and entertaining to watch all the way through. They make it fairly easy to understand what's going on. So I am having a blast and I hope that you guys are too uh, and that you enjoyed my reaction to both these episodes. And if you did, make sure to give this video a like, comment down below and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on videos like this one. If you wanna watch this video full length uncut as well as early access to more Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood reactions, my Patreon link is in the description below. It's going to be on tiers gold and platinum, and I will see you guys in the next one.